You ever get frustrated trying to take pictures of tiny little things underwater? I mean, look at this cute little diver. He has a head that's smaller than a penny. How would I take a picture of that and keep it in focus and make it look good underwater? Well, today we are going to talk about the equipment and the gear that is going to make your underwater macro shots even better. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Some of you out there might love taking pictures of big oil animals. I also love to take pictures of the tiniest little creatures in the sea. And to do that, we are going to have to maybe change our technique and sometimes even change the equipment. So in our continuing series on underwater photography, last time we talked about wide angle pictures and taking pictures of those big old animals. This time around, we're gonna talk about some of the adjustments that we're going to make in terms of macro and super macro photography. One of those adjustments is we're gonna use a different lens on this system. This comes with a 14 by 42 millimeter lens. This is a 60 millimeter lens, which will let me get really up close and personal with tiny little creatures. For example, if we look at this diver that we showed you in the introduction, his head is about the size of a penny. And so difficult to focus on that with a larger lens. Also, we are going to talk about different lighting that we can use to really highlight those tiny little creatures and make amazing pictures. Before we do that though, I am Lyle. Welcome to Everything Scuba. We are glad you are here, particularly if you're a first time viewer. Um, we are here talking about, well, everything about the sport that we love and we hope you love it too. If you love to scuba dive, dive into Everything Scuba. We'd love to have you join us. So um, let's get to it. Here is the uh, Olympus EPL-10. It has the 14 by 42 millimeter uh, kit lens on it. When I turn on the system, you can see that lens protrudes out uh, a little bit, uh, not huge. Um, you can turn the system into a macro system by simply attaching a, a diopter on a hinge so you can put the diopter in place and then remove it. Another way to do that is to add an actual macro lens. And so, uh, when I switch out the 14 by 42 millimeter kit lens with the 60 millimeter uh, lens that I purchased to give me a little bit more flexibility when it comes to macro, now the camera has a much bigger nose and that nose is not going to fit inside the, the port as is. A couple of different options. One is to use an extension ring we're going to remove this port and place an extension ring and then reattach that same port. Uh, gives us the ability to then just use this port with an extension. Uh, the other option is to buy a completely separate port and uh, AOI does make a separate port dedicated for this 60 millimeter lens. Uh, it has a, a flat port on the front um, I chose the extension uh, for a couple of reasons. One was obviously it costs less, um, uh, probably a couple hundred dollars less in purchase price. Uh, the main reason was I was leaving on a trip and I really wanted to take macro pictures and the, uh, the main port was still on back order and so Backscatter was kind enough to get this to me in time. So now we have that uh, extension uh, installed. Uh, it sits between the main housing and the original port. And now it accommodates that 60 millimeter longer lens to sit within the system so we can take pictures of tiny little critters a lot more easily. Um, when it comes to macro photography, a couple of things that we'll show you here. Um, on our initial introductory episode, we did a little compare and contrast of some macro pictures. One was of the nudibranch where uh, I took that, uh, I was in some current, uh, it was very difficult to stabilize myself and trying to get a nice clear crisp picture was tricky versus uh, this guy here which is a banded coral shrimp um, and I was able to stabilize myself in a way they give me a much more crisp and clear photograph. So let's take a look at that. So here I have the uh, exit underwater tripod system. Um, three legs, they attach two balls on this base plate. Um, you can simply twist and loosen. Again, we're gonna 
give you a very much more detailed uh, video on this uh, in the upcoming series. Uh, but this really allows me to stabilize my system, set this down. Don't always have to use all three legs. Sometimes I'll actually bring one leg up, but I can set these two down so I can position myself to take that photograph or video. Uh, so it gives me a lot more flexibility. This has a base plate that attaches on the underside um, of the uh, tray. Many times if you have a housing that's large enough, it may already have these three ball attachments on it. So you can simply buy the legs. Uh, the base plate had to be purchased separately so I could attach it to this tray system. So let's see what that looks like assembled. So here is the tray and uh, housing attached to the exit underwater uh, uh, tripod system with the base plate that we use to mount it. There's a single bolt uh, that simply attaches to the underside of the tray. Uh, there's a non-slip surface on top of here that prevents things from rotating. But consider a tripod system uh, if you want to take really good little macro uh, photographs. So in terms of lighting for macro photography, uh, obviously the arm system, the ultralight arm system on here gives us a lot of flexibility in how we want to position those. Again, we're going to get into a lot more detail on strobe positioning for the different forms of photography. But for example, when you're taking a, a picture of a little tiny critter, the, the angle and how you take that photograph is going to make or break it. And so with this, you know, you might want to try and light it from the side and while you're hitting it from some, with some light from above. Uh, the mini flashes here though, they still have about 110 to 120 degree divergence uh, as the light leaves uh, the flash. And so sometimes constraining all of that uh, uh, light and getting a really nice dark background can be a little bit of a challenge. And so I'm going to show you one other item that you can use to help with that in a lighting sense. So this is an optical snoot. Uh, this is made by Backscatter specifically for their, their mini flashes. Uh, I know it fits on one of the other, their other macro lights as well, uh, but uh, what this allows us to do, again, it's, a, it's a, a wet system, so it needs to be burped if you have this installed prior to getting in the water. And so typically I'm going to use that snoot either from, for top-down lighting or hitting the, the subject in front. And so I'm simply going to take off uh, the diffuser from that, and the snoot will simply plug in place and we then have a way to really narrowly focus the light um, and again we're going to get a lot more detail on this there's different aperture settings the different uh, types of lighting and shapes that you can create that come out of this but this really constricts down the uh, light into a nice narrow beam so you can really highlight and focus that subject so this is a, a pretty cool uh, macro setup uh, within the housing. We've got that 60 millimeter lens. We would even have the option of adding that uh, diopter on a hinge system so we could even magnify it even more. Uh, the arms allow us to bend and twist and place our strobes where we want them and at the addition of an optical snoot gives us a, a few other characteristics in terms of lighting in, in a way that uh, these flashes just won't accommodate to. But what if you want to shoot video, either wide angle or macro videography? Well, in the next episode, we're going to cover that setup too. Click the link up above.